Hey guys, Scott from AristaCobb.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. And together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. And uh, welcome once again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Happy International Corn Cob Pipe Month. Continuation of International Corn Cob Pipe Month. Very exciting time. And happy Thanksgiving. It's tomorrow. Oh my gosh, it is. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you too. Thank you. Hey, speaking of International Corn Cob Pipe Month, just in case you missed it, I'm sorry, Let me allow me to give a quick little AristaCobb plug here. This month... In the U.S., your shipping is free, but you got to use the code that's contained within the description of the video that I use to announce that. Hmm. Um, international shipments are half price. Dang. And as always, if you are shipping to somebody who's in service of our country and they have an APO address or whatever the other variations of, the, uh, of, of that, we pay the shipping on that uh, every day of the year. Wow. So anyway, jump on that if you like. Um, somebody so order now. Somebody asked me. Get some Christmas gifts for yourself. Get a Christmas cob for some international friends. Yeah. And ship some international cobs to anyone you know in the military. That's a great idea. Uh, somebody asked me why the code isn't uh, isn't at aristocob.com. Why isn't it there? Well, f- or why we didn't just change the way everything is priced and, and do it. That's a pain in the butt. I mean, anybody who makes that suggestion obviously is not into e-commerce on the uh, selling side. It's difficult to do, and putting the uh, the free postage and all those discounts on the website doesn't make sense from a retail standpoint. You think about if you walked into a retail store and there was somebody there handing you discount coupons. Mm-hmm. You're already there at the store. You're there to buy, right? Right. So we, we want people to get over there, and so we've announced this pretty much exclusively here on YouTube. Cool. So there you go. Cool deal. Get yourself some to, discounts. Need to go get myself some discounts. What are we smoking here, boy? Uh, this is Ashton's Rainy Day, a savory blend of Virginia and Burley Leaf with velvet black Cavendish, mm-hmm. aged in whiskey barrels for precisely one month. This mixture smokes smooth and heralds a marvelous aroma of tropical fruit and hickory nuts. Hickory nuts? It smells good. As far as as far as the tobacco goes, it, it smells fruity and hmm. nutty. Um, I'm smoking in a, an old beat up uh, diplomat pipe and that's, a, that started to discolor. I did a video on that recently. Somebody I'm smoking in that. a newish, <laughs> old looking rustic rustic cob. I like this pipe. I do too. It's a nice pipe. So, um, thinking about Thanksgiving, I mean, what are your plans? You Wait, know my give, plan. give him a minute. Oh. oh, oh! what are your plans? Oh, you don't say. <laughs> they don't say. Why Excellent. don't they say? They never say. Never do. Leave a comment. What are you doing? You staying home? You, you going to family, friends? Now let's talk about what we're doing. What are we doing? The last couple of years, we, um, we have family in... I have family through in-laws in Kentucky, and many times we go to visit them, but... Um, Allison's grandparents are in the process of trying to pack up their host house to move, so they have boxes everywhere, um, and so we're not going to go over there. They've lost their turkey. Yeah, and then um, and that's where we were last year. Uh, sometimes we go up to Ohio to visit my grandmother, but this year we've decided to stay local. Um, Mom and Dad are hosting Thanksgiving at their place, which is going to be great. It's been a couple of years since we've done that. For some reason, we've hosted Thanksgiving a couple of times in the last few years at our tiny apartment. For for really just for the stragglers that aren't traveling, um, the a few times that we've been home, you know maybe most of Allison's family will go to Kentucky, but her brother might stay local, and mom and dad might go up to Ohio. Yeah, but my Jan, sister, Jandy and I have driven to Ohio a couple times recently. My uh, my father in law was in pretty bad shape the last couple of years and couldn't travel. Um, he has since died, and so uh, he's not uh, tying us down to Ohio. Yeah, this is February. Yeah. Um, yeah, turkey at our place. But we're going to do something different because, in the meantime, Boy and his bride have have discovered the the way they like to cook their turkey. I have my way. I like to cook my turkey. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of a cook off. Our ways are pretty much the same because but mine's better. I had the best turkey I've I've had in my life last year that I cooked. I grew up eating lots of turkeys that this guy cooked. So if the best one in my life was was mine. <laughs> I'm winning, clearly, this year. Yeah, we're having a turkey off. Um, I don't know if Dana's going to get involved, my sister. I don't know. Not. Hold on a second. 
you can't judge the previous turkey experiences because you obsess that. about about the yams, the uh, sweet potatoes. Man, that, th- those things hit the table, and that's all Seth can think about. I, I am I am a sucker. For, I'm a sucker for some good sweet potatoes. Unfortunately, you know who doesn't make good sweet potatoes? This guy. <laughs> the last time we had Thanksgiving at their house, he made some highfalutin, fancy fancy sweet potatoes that were just so disappointing. I was so disappointed. He <laughs> loved them. He he loved them. Because they weren't sweet, they weren't potatoes, it, it was just mushy yam. It reminds me a little bit of how, growing up, how Dad used to like to eat the maple nut ice cream, or any kind of flavor that sounds like it fell off a tree, that was mm. always the flavor that the men ate, um, butterscotch and crap like that, and I didn't like that, I liked like Superman, that had chewing oh, yeah. gum in it and stuff like that. And, and how my tastes have grown to and changed to where I do like those things that have nuts and, you know, maybe stronger flavors that I didn't care for as a kid. It's, it's also so. probably partially the, um, the way that if you, if you give your kids the option between eating a McDonald's Happy Meal or eating a home-cooked dinner, they're picking McDonald's because that's just what they like. That's what they're used to. And so growing up, I would use some mom cooking sweet potatoes with um, brown sugar and marshmallows. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, love it. That's one of my favorite things. I would eat that for dessert. Uh, one of the best places to get that is Boston Market, who also <sighs> makes sweet cornbread. I love sweet cornbread, not the normal non-sweet variety. Mm. Unless, unless it's chock full of bacon and stuff and cooked the, the over way I, Yeah, the, way I, the yeah. way I make it on a fire is yeah. the, way to, the way to do it. Fortunately, we've never been able to replicate that at home. Um, and so he made it's some... It's weird. Yeah. It's probably like when you go to the theme parks and all of the, the <laughs> really nasty food there, like corn dogs. Corn dogs always taste better if it, you're eating it off of a truck in the middle of a the Disney mid- parking midway. lot. Right. Yeah. Um, then it does if you're eating it out of the oven at home. Um, and part of that is just the sheer starvation yeah, and yeah. Uh, and some some deprivation is involved mm-hmm. there. Yeah, there was that pizza place. I remember. I remember there was a pizza place well, yeah, at Kings it was, Island. It was owned by La Rosa's or operated by La Rosa's at Kings Island. They'd, they'd sell pizza by the slice, which they didn't sell at their stores. Some of the Cincinnati. best pizza you could get. It, it, I remember it being called just, Wings. Just was called. incredible. Uh, one of my favorite pizzas, and then the one or two times that we went to a brick and mortar store, Rose's. it was terrible. No, it was, it was not nearly. It didn't as meet good. your expectations. Not nearly. It, it's sort of like in New Again, York. If you're in New York bad. City and you're buying pizza by the slice, you're buying pizza that was partially baked, and then that pizza is set out normally at room temperature, uh, but under under protection. And then they're reheating it and bringing it up to temperature, sort of like the way they do at Flying Pizza in, in Dayton. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's something about that two-step process, I think, kind of like the way if you cook French fries properly and you do a, a quick blanching of them in, in, in oil, then pull it out, let it cool off, then cook it again. Yeah. It, it changes the texture, right? Mm. It makes it a different experience. And that's definitely what was going on at the theme park. Sell them by the slice. They yeah. they baked it and then they threw it back in the oven real quick. And but mm. again, in New York, you're eating the pizza in New York, so well, that's not true. You know that that carries a weight of expectation. True. With it, just like I when had we some eat awful pizza in New York did recently. You? Oh gosh, yes, it was so bad, so bad. Just like when we eat my turkey, it's going to taste better than the other turkeys because everybody knows I cooked the best turkey last year. <laughs> he didn't even bother cooking one last I year. I didn't. So, I'm winning. My company gives us all a turkey each year, um, but because I travel so much, I take the option of the coupon. They'll give you a coupon that you can then redeem at a grocery store and get a turkey. And the problem was, I got my turkey after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and it was, I don't understand, they could not have sold all the turkeys. All that was left were mm-hmm. some no-name stuff or some ridiculously expensive um, butterball turkeys. I wonder, maybe they sold them afterwards because they reduced them. I wonder if they send them back and they get flash frozen to be sold later in the year. I don't year. think that that would be legal. Yeah. Who knows the answer to that? They can't do that. Can they take a frozen turkey from a grocery store and put it back in storage? Why not? I don't think that that's doable. 
Why? Well, because they're kept at a certain temperature where they're deep freeze, deep frozen, and then they're brought up to a cool, a warmer temperature. Well, maybe they don't frozen. take them out of the. Maybe they just take the ones that are in the back freezer, okay, maybe freezer, so. freezer, and which is why they don't have a huge influx of leftover inventory. Could be, but I, I've never seen where mounds and mounds of turkeys were discounted, except for when you know Food Lion or somebody's trying to get you to come in and buy everything for Thanksgiving. Right. And so they they do a thing where if you buy spend twenty bucks or something like that every week for, for seven eight, weeks, eight consecutive yeah. weeks, your turkey's free or your turkey's cheap. And uh, I just don't I don't shop that often. Yeah. We eat out way too much because it's just my schedule requires it of us. My wife got tired of throwing food away out of the refrigerator because my travels make her, you know, she's cooking for one, at most cooking for two, and uh, just makes it a pain. Yeah. So what method do you use when cooking a turkey? For the most part, I follow the Alton Brown method. Not the deep fried, you know, uh, turkey derrick that he made, Mm. but the, the method of brining. Um, and followed by... Now, this is one that he, he outlined on Good Eats. Years ago. Years ago. Yeah. It's also one of the top downloaded um, recipes at the Food Network's website. And it's five stars. It works really, really With well. 8, but, but the one, the one thing that he does differently than most people is he starts the, the oven at a very high temperature. I want to say With it's the even, triangle. I want to say it's even 500 degrees. Yeah. Right? It's very, very high. You, you preheat your oven, and then you reduce the oven and then immediately stick the turkey in. So the oven's on its way down in temperature. But in the meantime... The, you start it high. Okay, you, you start co- high. You cook it high for like half an hour. But that, that, really, drop that really crisps everything up. So it's just right. the opposite. Most recipes, if you do that, you're browning at the end, right? Right. So he's doing his browning for the most part at the beginning of the cooking cycle. Right. And and his theory on this, which I think it holds true, is if you cook a turkey at a high temperature, you're going to overcook the exterior for the interior to be cooked. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you cook it for a very, very long time and then you crank the heat up, again, you're going to be forcing moisture out of the outer portions right. of the bird, which is why you end up having... I've had turkey... At places that shall be uh, unnamed because I still am related to the people that cooked it, um, where the, the the thighs were still bloody, uh, and at the same time the breast was overcooked. Yeah. So there's That's some no thermal good. dynamics at play, some science that is not understood. Well, and other, Alton understands it. The other thing that he does that's brilliant is the aluminum foil triangle. So you start the turkey really high, and then... You, when you bring it down, you place a preformed, preformed to the turkey shape triangle over the breast, mm-hmm. and what that does is it keeps that part from. It insulates getting, the breast oh, a little yeah. bit, which otherwise might overcook. Now, what I haven't yeah. done is the method of cooking the turkey upside down, which some people have yeah. have espoused that. So, the fat on the back and in the, in the skin of the back will kind of Close melt down. its way down and baste the breast. Another uh, another one is the um, what do they call that spatchcock? Oh, I, don't know. I think it's spit spatchcock. I think that's right. Uh, where basically you're butterflying the turkey mm, mm-hmm. and laying it flat, and in that way, what you're doing is you're creating uh, a very equal mass, so that every part is cooking equally. Unlike when the turkey is whole, you got this big big cavity of air on the inside that's that's fighting. Warming up, that's also why you don't really want to stuff a bird at the very beginning, a naked, raw bird, stuff it full of stuffing. You don't want to stuff it at all, according to Alton. Yeah, because that... that well, no, he actually puts some aromatics on the inside, which... Aromatics, cor- yes. He puts puts apples and onions, but not stuffing, bread yeah. stuffing. He believes stuffing is evil. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't belong inside the turkey. Yeah. It sucks the moisture out, and then it can be a breeding ground for bacteria. Yep. Yep, and again, if you get it hot enough that that, that is going to be safe to eat, then you've ruined your turkey. The other idea is you can pull the stuffing out after the turkey's done and then put it back into a pan, stick it in the oven, let it come cool. up the temperature. But anyway. So the one thing that he does Why that... Why dry out your bird? I don't know. The one thing that... Because it's tradition. <laughs> the one thing that he does that, that most people... Um, or that, that we had... 
I don't know if you've done this before, but in the last five, six years that I've been cooking a turkey, um, you haven't done this. Um, and told me kind of you can just skip, skip this step. It's a step that I decided not to skip last year, which is why I think my, my turkey was so good, is brining the turkey. And so well, I, don't, I don't say to skip that. What I what I did say was I because I've, we bought I've, a pre brine turkey. I've altered no, I still I still brine it, but I I altered the recipe because his recipe for his brine requires a lot of expensive ingredients, and they're right. So he's they're he's, hard to find too. But it's it's lots and lots of broth, which then gets thrown away. Yes, but I decided to make that investment last year. Mm-hmm. It, that was the first time I'd done it. I had brined it. I had thawed it and, and maybe brined it in something else. But, I mean, the turkeys that we had were pre-brined anyway and have always done that. It's always been super moist and, and well-cooked before, but last year was the first year that I brined it in the broth. And I, I got a hold of these. They're expensive ingredients, especially since you're buying a spice that's $8 that you're going to use once a year. Um, but... That was super. Well, I'm doing that again this year. I I'm try totally to avoid the pre-brined turkeys, but almost all of them have some water and things introduced to them. But you can tell if they're in a bag and the, and the turkey is wet yeah, um, because that changes the texture of the, of the meat. And it's one of the reasons why anymore I don't care for KFC. KFC, uh, especially their double down, that, that sandwich that was made of two breasts, that that boneless. Have you seen they now have a double down burger, which has a burger between, between two, chicken, two breasts. chicken breasts? Yeah. <laughs> yep. They used to, and maybe on some of the parts they still brine in house. They do a quick little brine pri- right prior to cooking. But it's my understanding that the boneless things are coming to them in a bucket that's pre brined or in a bag yeah. that's pre brined. And I noticed immediately the first time we had that double down burger, the texture was not right. Yeah. So um, anyway, double down. Double down. So, gosh, this turned into a, a cooking. I know. Uh, editorial. Definitely check out Alton Brown's video on that though. If you're cooking a turkey this year, let's link to that. Son. <clears throat> we will, but also you should check it out. You should check out the link. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you will. I don't. I don't do the links. I'm assuming they're already gone. Yeah. As soon as we mentioned that's, it, they went that's looking what I, for it. That's what I would do. Hopefully, since Thanksgiving is tomorrow, you already have a plan for cooking a turkey. The other thing that I love about Alton's method, it is the fastest way to cook a turkey I've ever experienced. You, It takes about three and a half hours, really, to cook the full turkey. I remember growing up having to wait for six hours, it feels like, before things were done. Not eating until three o'clock in the afternoon because grandma or mom was was cooking the turkey and it was taking just forever and starting with that really high heat bringing it down speed it gets the job done yeah yeah i'm hungry i am too (laughs) some turkey that'd be good you know what even if even if you don't have all those ingredients um, go ahead and get yourself a turkey in the next couple of days you don't have to cook it thanksgiving day go ahead and eat that turkey that your mother-in-law is ruining but make yourself your own turkey, and then you'll have yes. those leftovers and those wonderful uh, oh. turkey sandwiches. At that, that turkey, the leftovers are amazing. Don't tell them where the pearl is. You mean, you mean the oyster? That's the one. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pearl when I get to it. The, there are two oysters on a turkey, and uh, they are really the best part. And my kids didn't even know they existed until they were about twenty-five years old, because those are the, those are gifts for the chef. Yeah. Look it up. You can yeah. find find it online Turkey where they are oysters. and how to remove those. Turkey oysters. They're um, awesome. So, speaking of... Turkey oysters? Yeah. Um, next, Starting next Monday is the start of Tobacco Advent. I, I just now realize that most of our subscribers weren't with us last year That's during true. Tobacco Advent. So if you're watching, you have no idea what we're talking about, and you have heard us talk about it. Let's explain for a minute what what that actually is and why we why we decide to do it. Um, a couple of years ago, I saw a um, I saw a calendar that was being put out by a um, Scotch or whiskey company that was an advent calendar. You know the, the ones that have the 25 days the, with the hidden doors and every day. 
of December leading up to Christmas, you open the door and you take out a piece of candy or take out a gift. Uh, you know, many, many Something of you help sure kids count down to, to Christmas. Count down to Christmas. And this company had one that they were selling that had uh, whiskey in it. And so you open it up and you have 25 days of samples of different whiskey. And I thought, man, it would be fun to celebrate the advent by having and, and getting to, to sample 25 different tobaccos. And so we decided last year, we asked for you guys to send us um, just a small sample of your favorite tobacco. And we got to spend 25 days smoking and trying out these, these new things. Now, those videos are separate or in addition to the normal Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club videos. And so those videos are about six to seven minutes a piece. And, um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll smoke the tobacco, talk about it a little bit, and go on our way. Um, well, those videos are going to start posting on Monday. So if you subscribe and you start seeing a whole influx of videos posting every single day has during a, the Advent It has a different, a different picture, though. A little, right. different thumbnail. Looks like a big red dot. Yeah. Um, so starting Monday for the 25 days leading up to and including Christmas, we're going to be posting a video a day. And, and those videos are going to be us smoking different things sent in by viewers like you. Um so keep an eye out for that. On Wednesdays, there will be two videos posted. There will be the, the tobacco advent for that day and the Mark Women's Breakfast Club for that day. Is it too late for them to send tobacco if, they, no. if they're just now seeing this? No. If this is the first you're, you're hearing of this and you've got a tobacco that um, is unique, something that, that you like or you know just something that you'd like, like to double, share. Double check our list. Where is that list? Well, you can find the list at mmbclub.com. Um, there's a list there and also the address where you can send the tobacco. Thank you for those that have already sent in tobacco. Um, many of you just jumped right on that. But because we have 25 days, if you send tobacco now, we'll get it before the end. That will be incorporated into the end of the month. Um, but, and then the tobaccos that we use, the uh, the people who provided that tobacco will get a uh, official Markwood Men's Breakfast Club cornament, which is, um, Seth is looking for it right now, one of the... Um, Naked, <laughs> naked Morgan nose warmer or the 320 of the corn cob world. And I love this pipe, love it. Um, and this is what we'll be smoking during Tobacco Advent. It's perfect for if you just have a couple of minutes to light up and, and enjoy a. Um, That's a, a 20 minute tobacco. smoke. Yeah, so it's still a decent, decent oh, yeah. smoke. And so the the are one of the one of a kind. They're signed by us. Mm. That's right. Um, they're signed. They are totally unique. Some of you will be getting your second cornament, your 2013 uh, cornaments you already have, plus 2014 for this year. So thank you for everyone who's sending in tobacco. Um, and so that's going to start. We need to start filming those. But that's going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that's, that. Yeah. I forgot about that uh, part. But, but keep an eye out because that's going to start on Monday. All right. Cool. I look forward to that. I really do. That's, that's a fun I, that time is, for us. That is one of my things that I am thankful for. It's tobacco advent. <laughs> no, I'm thankful for for you guys who are willing to share with us. Um, and ladies. And, and ladies, actually. <laughs> the last 30 days, the last 30 days, our viewership has been 100% male, according to uh, Google, uh, YouTube Google analytics. analytics. Mm -hmm. So 100%, 100% of you are watching on your male YouTube account. Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> no, 100% in of there. you ladies are logged into your male YouTube account. Whatever it takes. I'm, it's the internet. We're happy to have you. It's the internet. Yeah, I'm. I'm thankful for that. You thankful for anything? Um, okay. Well, of course, I'm. I am thankful. So thankful for my family. Um, I've got four lovely grandchildren. A fifth one on the way, which you've just learned about. Um, two wonderful children who married great, great spouses. I, of course, am thankful for my bride mm -hmm. and all she puts up with. And, uh, and then my family beyond that. I've got family all over the U.S. that are uh, some pretty special people. Thankful for them. And, of course, thankful for friends. You know, yeah. the, the one surprising thing we've mentioned before about the YouTube pipe community is there are people that we, we are friends with. You know, it's one thing to watch a TV show and to say, boy, I sure like that guy. Yeah. That actor is really something. But to, to actually have an opportunity to interact and, and even in some cases meet you has been uh, a true gift. So I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Vox and <laughs> Vox chat with. 
Um, he was telling me just the I'm other thankful day, for Voxer the fast forward people. button on the Voxer. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, it, it, I wouldn't it, be able to listen to use Voxer if it weren't for that. No, it's it, it has been it has been incredible. You know, the, the other day someone was um, having a rough day and they gave me a call and um, someone that I know primarily, I'm almost wholly through the the YouTube pipe community and getting to touch base and, and get to know them there. And that that was um, a surreal and, and touching experience that. I have developed a friendship with someone someplace else in the world through YouTube and through a, a shared interest, yeah. and and that you know the relationships develop to the point that I'm someone that they reach out to in a time of, of distress, and hmm. and so that that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, I'm I'm thankful for all of those things. You really took all of the obvious ones, <laughs> but that's how I roll. Um, yeah this this year. I'm just, I'm really excited. I, I get to be a dad again, and I am um, I'm so thankful for that opportunity, and I'm I'm thankful that my wife still likes me and puts up with me, and um, she is such a hard worker and has um, has she just takes such good care of of our family um, in all sorts of ways, and I am incredibly grateful for that. I, I'm grateful that. We live close to family yeah. and are able to get together and hang out and do things like this. And um, so, among all sorts of other things, I'm grateful that I am almost done with graduate school for real. Uh, there was a snafu. I didn't have all the classes I needed. I was one class short, and I am just about done with that class. I'm so thankful for that to be done. done. Good. So, so, what are you thankful for? Uh, you know, we, we 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 try to prompt you each week to toss something in the comments because you know what? Um, if all if all this is is us sitting in my shop talking to a camera, it's a little empty. We love getting comments. This is the bird too. We love getting your comments. <laughs> so tell us yeah. about your Thanksgiving. Tell us about what you're thankful for. Um, we, we'd love to hear it. That's right. If you don't get a chance to watch this until after Thanksgiving, which I totally wouldn't blame you, um, let us know how it went. If you did anything exciting, if you've got in-laws in town and how you're managing. Did if, you discover the oysters and keep them for yourself? Or the pearls. <laughs> he doesn't even know about the pearls. All right. On that note, let's wrap this up. Make it a great week, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving.